Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil mursalin, sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa habibina, wa shafi'ina wa qa'idina wa qurrati uyunina, sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma iftah alayna iftuh al-arifin. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana ya arhamar rahimin. Today, inshallah, we will talk about Ummu Ma'bad. And Ummu Ma'bad radiyallahu anha is nicknamed by the, the describer of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So who is Ummu Ma'bad? What happened at the tent of Ummu Ma'bad? Um Abad radiyallahu anha, her name is Atika bint Khalidin ibn Khalifin ibn Munqidh ibn Rabi'at al-Khuza'iyyat al-Ka'biyya. She was an honorable female companion. She was very eloquent. And she had one of the most eloquent, eloquent description of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Quraysh practiced all types of oppression against Muslims. They got so mad that the Muslims had left the religion of their forefathers. They wanted them to go back to their old religion. And they did their best. They wanted them to abandon Islam. They did all they can. They followed all possible means, good or bad, but no luck. So they, tor they, they tortured Muslims so harshly, but again, no luck. Muslims would not go back to the, to the for, uh, religion of their forefathers. So they, the Muslims were tortured so harshly. And until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave the permission to Muslims to migrate, and a lot of them did migrate. And of course, the first migration was to Habasha, to Abyssinia. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, go there, their king is a just person. And when they went there, we know that Quraysh sent two uh, 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 people, so they would talk to Al Najashi and they will, uh, uh, convince him to get those Muslims back to Mecca. And we all know the story how after they talked uh, uh, Sayyidina Jafar talked to and he told uh, uh, Negus, he told the Najashi the story that we were sent to you by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told us that you are the just king that no one will get hurt at his land. And hearing their story, especially when uh, those two, the, two people of Quraysh, they told the, the king that they talk badly about uh, Jesus and uh, Mary. So, the king asked them, what do you say in them? And when he, when he heard the Quran that was revealed to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about Sayyidina Maryam, he said, he looked at those Qurayshi people and he said to them, I'm not giving, giving them to you. And he ordered his uh, people to give them back their gifts that they brought. 
and the Muslims stayed there and they were safe at his land, at his country. And we all know that this delegation, this group of Muslims, after some time, they went, uh, some of them went back to uh, Mecca. And uh, also they were tortured. And until that, that situation kept so, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the permission to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to migrate. So the, the Muslims first uh, uh, migrated to Medina. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in Mecca until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the permission to go to Medina. And he was, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was accompanied by his great companion, Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And with them, uh, uh, there was the freed slave uh, Amr ibn Fahira, Amr ibn Fahira, and uh, radiallahu an, and also their guide was Abdullah ibn Rayqit, and he was uh, not a Muslim yet. So they left Mecca, heading towards Medina. The sun was was so hot. The sand was burning. The distance was so long. And in the midst of the desert, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a far away tent. And the group immediately headed there. They were looking for shade, for food, for drink. So whose tent was it? That tent was for, for Umm Ma'bad and her husband, Abu Ma'bad. And they placed their tent in that place so they could host the travelers. So what happened? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, got there. And there was a strong woman feeding uh, uh, the feeding the uh, uh, animals, and uh, her her few animals that were there. So they asked her, Sayyidina Muhammad sallam, asked her for some meat and dates so they would buy from her. But what happened? Unfortunately, there was nothing to offer them. That time they had that time they had severe drought. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam noticed uh, at the corner, a weak goat, and he requested uh, Umm Ma'bad to milk it. But she said, this, uh, so when he said to her, what, what is this shahat ya Umm Ma'bad? She said, it's a weak uh, um, goat that, uh, weak sheep that, uh, that is, uh, in in the tent, it didn't go with the other sheep for grazing. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked, "Is there any? Um, the, uh, does it give any uh, milk?" And she said, "Muhammad said, no. She is so weak. She is weaker than giving milk." So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, asked her. Would you permit me to milk this sheep? She said, yes. If, if you find uh, milk, then there will be milk. So say, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, 
he uh, wiped the other and he said bismillah rahman rahim and he made dua so what happened miraculously the milk started gushing at the hands at the blessed hands of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the it was a lot of milk so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the milk to Ma'bad and she drank and she, she drank and drank. And then he gave milk to his companions and they drank and drank and all of them. And then, uh, so so they drank once, twice, and um, he repeated uh, that, and he gave them again. So uh, they got what they wanted, and they left. SubhanAllah. So when they left, there was plenty of milk for Umabad and her family. Now when her husband, when her husband, uh, Aktham, Aktham ibn uh, Abu Jawan al-Khuzai, so when he came back at the end of the day, and he was, uh, uh, getting all, all the sheep that he took for grazing. So when, when he returned from herding his sheep, he, he saw all the milk. And he asked his wife, where this, had, this milk had come from? So she explained. She explained, and she explained what, she, what happened. She explained what she saw. And she said to him, a blessed man had passed by. And her husband immediately said, he asked her, her, her to, to describe this man with, with his companions. And Umm Abad gave an incredible description of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let's uh, read the hadith and try to uh, understand it, inshallah. So on, on the authority of Umm Abad, uh, describing the Prophet وسلم, she said, Ra'aytu rajulan zahir al I saw a man of visible radiance and purity. He was beautiful in appearance. He had a bright, bright face. His face was radiant. He had a beautiful, a beautiful face. Hassan al khalq He was beautiful. If you look at him, then you see the beauty in his face. Lam ta'ibhu thulja. Lam ta'ibhu thujla. Walam tazu bihi sal'a. With neither protruding ribs nor a small head. Wasimun qasim. He is handsome and fair. 
The word dash means shiddatu sawadi al-ayn. So his eyes were deep black and they were large. Wafi ashfarihi watf. And his eyelashes were lush. Wafi samtihi sahal. So his voice was mellow and soft. Wafi unukihi sata. And his neck was long. Ahbar, akhal, azaj, akran. The whiteness of his eyes was bright. And his pupils were black. They were very black. His eyebrows were beautifully arced and connected. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم شديد سواد الشعر His hair is black إذا صمت علىه الوقار When he was silent he appeared dignified وإن تكلم علىه البهاء and when he spoke, he was eminent and crowned with magnificence. حلو المنطق حلو المنطق فصل لا لا نزر ولا هذر كأن منطقه خرزات نظم يتحدرن so his speech was sweet. So imagine the, the words that Umm Abad has heard from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she's describing these, these words with sweetness. And, and these words were precise, neither too, lo too little nor too much. And in another hadith, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was described as um, So he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say only the needed, the few words that would give a lot of meanings. So his speech was sweet. His words were precise. They were neither too long nor, nor too much. They were neither too little nor too much. And like his, his words, his speech was like a string of pearls, his words. So like a string of pearls, Flowing down gradually. Imagine these, this description. Rab'a, la ba'inun min tool, wa la taqtahimhu aynun min qisar. So, ghusnun bayna ghusnayn. فهو أنظر الثلاثة منظرا وأحسنهم قدرة. So after after talking about his words, his speech, she said he was the most the most striking and beautiful of people when seen from from far away, and the fairest of them. When seen up close, he was medium height, neither unagreeably tall nor scornfully short. 
he was a branch between two branches. So she likened him to a branch and his companions uh, were also like branches. And among the, the, these three people, among the three, he was the most radiant in appearance. MashaAllah, how, how amazing this description is. And he, she, she continued, she said, he was the finest of them in stature. So it was only a few minutes that Umm Abad has seen Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she described him this amazingly. She, she went on and she said, Lahu rufaqa'un yahfuna bih. Ida qala stama'u li qawli. Or in qala ansatu li qawli. وَإِنْ أَمَرَ تَبَادَرُوا أَمْرَ So, he was surrounded by companions. When he spoke, they listened attentively. And when he gave orders, they hastened to fulfill them. So she... She, she was very careful describing Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also the people who were with him, his companions. Then she went on and she said, Mahfudun Mahshud, la abisun, wala mufannad. So she said, honored, he was honored. He was served and surrounded by followers. He neither frowned nor criticized. SubhanAllah. So what was the reaction of her husband when he heard this amazing description? He said, "Huwa wallahi sahib Qurayshin alladhi zukira lana min amrihi ma zukira bi Makka." I swear by Allah that this man is from Quraysh, and this man is the same one that was mentioned to us in Mecca. وَلَقَدْ هَمَمْتُ أَنْ أَصْحَبَهُ I had the intention to follow him, to be on his religion. And I swear that I will follow him if I find the means for that. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, he, he left and the uh, Abu Ma'bad came, then what happened? You know that when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left uh, Quraysh, left Mecca, they sent people looking for him everywhere. And it was that group of people whom they sent, some of them reached Abu Ma'bad. So, what happened? Uh, um Mabad looked at those people who came to her and she noticed that evil was flying from their eyes. As I just mentioned, Um Mabad uh, Umm Abad was very smart, very clever, and with a few minutes, she gave all that amazing description of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she immediately noticed the, that from their eyes, she, real, she realized that they were bad, evil people. 
So they asked her, where is Muhammad, ya Umm Ma'bad? So Umm Ma'bad was scared, not for herself, but for the messenger of Allah. She, she wanted him to reach Medina safe. So she said to them, you're asking me about something I never heard of before, the, my, uh, before this year. And they said, You know where he left, where he went, where he headed. And she said, she immediately said, I don't know what you are talking about. Then they asked her the question again, and it was obvious in their faces the evilness that they, they had in their hearts to see the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she said, if you do not leave from here immediately, I will shout and my people will come from far away. They will come and you will be in trouble. So the people of Quraysh knew that those people, I mean, this group of people who were looking for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they knew that she was an honored woman. And they knew that her tent is on the way to her uh, people, to her tribe. So as if she was a guard to the path of the travelers. And they, they knew for sure that if she screamed, then they, everyone will, will come. So they, they preferred to go back instead of getting in trouble and being uh, um, uh, losers. So it was just a few days later that Umm Abad has gathered her stuff and she, uh, with her husband, uh, left for Medina. They wanted to catch Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in Medina, the, the blessed city of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they reached there, they, they both went directly to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They announced their shahada and they pledged uh, to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they became very good Muslims, very good companions of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So from this story, Umm Abad has entered history because of her eloquency, because of her uh, very accurate description to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She described his hair, she described his eyes, she described his eyebrows, she described his mouth, she described his neck, she described him, she described his manners just in a few minutes that she met him. So uh, she was one of the female companions that we till today say her name. We till today enjoy the description of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the accurate description that she has given of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Her description was so sincere. And that's why it stayed and it reached us today. In our days, we are reading what has been written about, what has been said about Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 1400 years ago by a woman companion. 
So narrations indicate that once uh, uh, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib was asked, what was the most accurate description of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu answered, Ajmal wa ablag waspin qila fi Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma dhikaratuhu ummu ma'badin al-khuza'iyya. The most eloquent, the most beautiful description that has been given about Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was what was mentioned by Ummu Ma'bad al-Khaza'iyya. No one has described Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like she did. So, subhanAllah. Uh, Sayyidina uh, Ali radiallahu an praised that description. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have his mercy upon this honorable companion, female companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was very eloquent, very accurate, very intelligent, very smart in giving the best description of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was Ummu Ma'bad Atika bintu Khalidin al-Khuza'iyya radiyallahu anha wa ardaha. We move on to another female companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her name is أم كلثوم بنت عقبة الأموية رضي الله عنها and her nickname is the one who migrated walking imagine who migrated from مكة to مدينة walking a female walking between مكة and مدينة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran that about this woman, this companion, this female companion that we still read till today and it will be still going on until the day of judgment. In Surah Al-Mumtahana, Ayah 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha al-lathina amanu, idha jaakum al-mu'minatu muhajiratin famtahinuhun, Allahu a'lamu bi imanihin, fa in alimtumuhunna mu'minatin fala tarji'uhunna ila al-kuffar, la hunna hillun lahum, wala hum yahillun lahun. So who is this? female companion, who is Umm Kulthum, about whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi ma akhraja kunna illa hubbu Allahi wa rasoolihi wal islam, wa ma kharajtunna li zawjin wa la mal. Allah subhanahu wa sallam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam swear that he, uh, the, uh, these, the, this woman uh, did not uh, migrate for a husband or for money. She did it only for the love of Allah, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the love of Islam. Who is Umm Kulthum? Umm Kulthum, the honorable female companion who, whose name is Umm Kulthum بنت عقبة بن أبي معيط بن عمر بن أمية بن عبد شمس القرشية الأموية. Her mom is أروى بنت كريز بن ربيع بن حبيب بن عبد شمس. أم كلثوم is the sister of عثمان بن عفان 
from her mother, Arwa. So who is this brave woman? Who is this brave companion, female companion, that no woman in Quraysh was as brave as she was? She was strong. She, uh, after following Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she was in a very bad position amongst her family, amongst her people, whom they wanted her to go back away, to go back away from Islam. They wanted her to go back to the religion of their forefathers. So Um Kulthum, may Allah be pleased with her, she became a Muslim in Mecca and uh, she was, uh, subhanAllah, yani, uh, her, her family tortured her. They tortured her. And she pledged to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She became a Muslim and she promised that she will be steadfast on Islam. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave her that uh, religion, that strength. So when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, she had to choose either to stay with her family or to leave or to leave to Medina and migrate to Medina alone. So what do you think she chose? Her love to Islam, her love to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made her travel to Medina and run away so to be, to, to preserve herself on the new religion. And she did. Even though they were uh, looking at her, even though they were uh, surrounding her, she was able to run away at night from Mecca, going towards the mountains, leaving to Medina, walking. She didn't have anything, any animal, any, any horse, any donkey, anything to mount. She was traveling uh, alone, no sustenance, no water, no food, nothing. While she was traveling, she met uh, a man from Khuza'a and he promised her that he will uh, be as a brother and he took her with him to Medina. And when she arrived in Medina, she knew that her two brothers, Al-Walid wa Umara, have came, uh, followed her and they are coming to Medina to get her back to her family. And they reached there. So Al-Walid and Umara came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they asked him to give them back Um Kulthum according to the agreement that Quraysh had with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of its uh, items was, if someone came to you running uh, away from us, from Quraysh, then you have to return that person. You have to return him uh, back to us. But what happened is uh, when they came to him, they said, yeah, Muhammad, oh, Muhammad, uh, fulfill your promise to us. So Umm Kulthum stood very strongly 
And she said, Ya Rasulullah, ana imra'a. Oh, Ya Rasulullah, I am a female. وَحَالُ النِّسَاءِ إِلَى الضُّعَفَاءِ مَا قَدْ عَلِمْتْ And you know how uh, weak uh, the women are in Quraysh. So, فَتَرُدَّنِي إِلَى الْكُفَّارِ يَفْتِنُونَنِي فِي دِينِي وَلَا صَدْرَ لِي If you want to send me back, then I will, I will be tortured until I uh, go back to that religion and I, do, I, I cannot be patient on that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heard her words and he revealed the ayahs that I have just mentioned, I've just read. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha ja'akum al-mu'minatu muhajiratin famtahinuhun. Oh, you who have believed. When a believing woman, women come to you as immigrants, examine them, test them. Allah Allah is most knowing as to their faith. If you know them that they are true believers, then do not return them to the to the non-believers. They are not lawful wives for them. They are not lawful kinship for them. And they are. Uh, nor, nor are they lawful husbands for them. So do not send women. If you test them and you realize that they are truthful, do not send them back. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tested her. And he tested all the women who came after her. And he used to say, Wallahi ma akhraja kunna illa hubbu Allahi wa rasoolihi wal islam wa ma akhraj tunna li zawjin wa la maal. I swear by Allah that you have migrated just for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of his messenger and the love of Islam. You haven't, uh, my, you did not migrate just for uh, money or for anything else. So this was uh, the, the truthful Umm Kulthum. So what happened? Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at Al-Walid wa Umara and he said to them, قد نقض الله العهد في النساء بما قد علمتما فانصرفا الله سبحانه وتعالى has given me an exception in women and you just heard it so go away I'm not giving you أم كلثوم back so أم كلثوم رضي الله عنها stayed in Medina under the shade of Islam. She was learning from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And soon enough, uh, Zayd ibn Haritha uh, uh, proposed to her and she accepted him. But it was not a long time after her marriage that her husband went for uh, jihad and he went to fight uh, for the sake of Allah you know, uh, in the battle of Mu'ta and he passed away. He was murdered. He was killed in that battle. Again, later on, as Zubair ibn al-Awwam uh, proposed, she got married to him. She had uh, one daughter with him her name was Zainab, but Zubair was very harsh and she could not live with him. So she said, she asked him for divorce and she had divorce. Later on, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf uh, proposed for her and she got married to him and she uh, had with him Ibrahim and Hamid. But later on, uh, this uh, good husband passed away. And after that, 
Amru ibn al-As radiyallahu an uh, proposed to her and she accepted the marriage but it was about one month that she lived with him that she passed away radiyallahu anha the amazing companion Umm Kulthum uh, passed away she was a righteous believer a righteous companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She became a Muslim. She uh, uh, struggled with her family, but she migrated walking from Mecca to Medina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her some help along the road. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also revealed Quran, or uh, revealed some ayahs that are re uh, read until today and until the day of judgment. This was Umm um Kulthum, radiyallahu anha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. And this is all for our session today. Until we meet, inshallah, next week. We, I pass my salam. And your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.